Hi, I'm Graham Simpson. I'm the author of The Rosie Project. Um, thanks to WH Smith for the opportunity to share some of my thoughts about the book. Uh, it's a romantic comedy about a socially challenged genetics professor who sets out to find himself a life partner, a wife, scientifically. And uh, he constructs a 16-page double-sided questionnaire to filter out all the inappropriate women, leaving a short list of, uh, of, suitable, of suitable people. Um, what happens is that he meets somebody, well, initially he doesn't do very well with the list at all, but then he meets somebody who meets none of his criteria, who fails on, on, every, on every question. But he finds himself strangely attracted to her, and this is, this is Rosie. And Rosie enlists him to help find her biological father. Her mother had a one night stand at a graduation party and took the identity of Rosie's father to her grave. Rosie wants to know who it is, and she thinks a, a certain genetics professor might be able to help her by doing some surreptitious DNA testing. So that's, that's where the story goes, and obviously as Don and Rosie spend more time together, a relationship develops, and that's the heart of the book. Uh, the, the writing process for me is very interesting. Um, I tend to work for a long time on getting the story right, the outline right, before I try to write new prose. And then the actual writing of prose goes very quickly. I, I drafted a second novel right after The Rosie Project, again in four weeks. Um, people have, often have special places they like to write. I've got the opposite. I've got a place I don't like to write. It's the best set up place in my house to write. It's my office, but because I do business work there, just somehow the creative muse doesn't strike me there. So I will write in all sorts of unhealthy positions, propped up in a chair, lying on the bed with a laptop. In fact, I wrote the whole of the Rosie project on my, on my notebook computer, which was not nearly as ergonomic as sitting in the proper chair with my, with my desktop computer. But I would write on trains, I would write um, in aeroplanes, I'd write late at night. Um, and, and the great thing about having a plan when you write is that you can actually do 30 minutes of writing and you're making some progress. Whereas if you don't have a plan, you spend, you'll spend that 30 minutes just working out where you're going, where you're up to. My, my tip for aspiring writers is don't believe anybody's tips for aspiring writers as being gospel. People find their own ways of writing. So anything I say is, this has worked for me. I mean, in particular, this idea of write every day. It's so often given to writers. And I would say, think about your writing every day, but your activity may not be writing, it might be planning. It, you know, it's, if you're a songwriter, it wouldn't necessarily be playing music every day. It might be some days you're, you're working out lyrics, you're doing different things, you're planning what you will do down the track. So, so that's very important. The other one is write with a plan. Um, now, I know that some people just sit down and let the story unfold. If it's working for you and you're on your third novel and they're getting published or good reviews and so forth, who am I to interfere? If it's not broken, don't fix it. But if you're struggling with that, I would say try something different. And the different thing to do is the thing that almost any other professional in any other field would do, which is work top down. Make a plan first and then start doing the actual filling in the gaps with the writing. <laughs>